ಓಂ ಭಗವದ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ಉನರಂ ಜೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವ್ಯಂ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸಂ ತಥೋ ಜಯಂ ಅತೀರಯ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಯೇಶು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕೆ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮರಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶನಖ ಚಾಕ್ಷರೋನ್ಮಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭಿಸ್ತ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಯ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಗರ ಜಾಂ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ ಮಿತಂ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಸವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗಿ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತಿ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಾತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಿಣೆ ಮಂಚಕಲ್ಪ ತರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತೀತಾ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗಧಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರವ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ continue reading from chaitanya charitam i'm sorry from shrimad bhagavatam we are on canto 3 on uh, chapter 14 so pregnancy of diti in the evening yesterday we finished the 13th chapter with the glorification of lord varaha dev by the inhabitants of the jana lok tapalok and satya lok how they are glorifying the lord so ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶುಕವಾಚ ನಿಶಮ್ಯ ಕೌಶಾರವರ್ಣಿತ ಹರೇ ಕಥಾ ಕಾರಣ ಸುಖನಾತ್ಮನ ಪುನಃ ಸಪ್ರಚಾತ ಉದ್ಯಂತಾಂಜಲೇರ್ ನ ಚಾತಿ ತೃಪ್ತೋ ವಿದೂರೋ ಧೃತ ವೃತ ಸುಖದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೇಜ್ ಮೈತ್ರಿಯ about the Lord's incarnation as Varaha, Vidura, who had taken a vow, begged him with folded hands to please narrate further transcendental activities of the Lord since he, Vidura, did not yet feel satisfied. So Vidura wants to hear more and more about the pastimes of the Lord. Vidura vacha te neva tu muni shreshta harina yagya murtina ಆದಿ ದೈತ್ಯೋ ಹಿರಣ್ಯಾಕ್ಷೋ ಅಥ ಇತಿ ಅನುಶುಷ್ರುಮಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಿದ್ದೂರ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಓ ಚೀಫ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೇಜಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿರಣ್ಯಾಕ್ಷ ದ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ದೀಮನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೀನ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಬೋರ್ as referred to previously the boar incarnation was manifested in two millenniums namely swayambhuva and chakshusha in both millenniums there was a boar incarnation of the lord but in the swayambhuva millennium he lifted the earth from within the water of the universe whereas in the chakshusha millennium he killed the first demon hiranyaksha in the swayambhuva millennium he assumed the white color and in the chakshusha millennium he assumed the color red vidur had already heard about one of them and he proposed to hear about the other the two different boar incarnations described are the one supreme personality of god him so krishna comes in the form of varaha dev twice once in swayambhuva uh in the swayambhuva millennium and the other one is in chakshusha and then in swayambhuva he is white in chakshusha he is red 
in the Chakshusha millennium, he's killed. He kills the Hiranyaksha, who's called the first demon. Is the first thing. So let's continue reading up. Text three: Tasya Chodarataha Kaushin Kaushna Shaunim Swadamstra Damstra Grena Lila Yadetya Rajasya Chabraman Kasma Detur Abun Ridaha. What was the reason, O Brahmana, for the fight between the demon king and Lord Bor? while the Lord was lifting the earth as his pastime. Shraddha dhanaya bhaktaya bruhita chanmat vistaram rishena tripyati manaha param kautu halam hime. My mind has become very inquisitive and therefore I'm not satisfied with hearing the narration of the Lord's appearance. Please, therefore, speak more and more to a devotee who is faithful. One who is actually faithful and inquisitive is qualified to hear the transcendental pastimes of the appearance and disappearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vidura was a suitable candidate to receive such transcendental messages. So hearing the pastimes of the Lord is a transcendental activity. And the qualification is written is faithful, that we have faith that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. All his forms are transcendental and inquisitive, wanting to know more and more about the Lord. And so that's why Maitriya Muni is also feeling enthusiastic to speak more and more about the Lord. You know, always they say, right, it depends upon the audience. When the audience is enthusiastic, then the speaker will reveal more and more. So here, that's what is Vidur's mood. Text 5. Maitriya vacha sadhu viratvaya prishtam avatar katham parehe yatvam prachasi martyanam mrityu pasha vishatanim. The great sage Maitriya said, O warrior, the inquiry made by you is just fit, befitting a devotee because it concerns the incarnation of the personality of Godhead. He's the source of liberation from the chain of birth and death for all those who are otherwise destined to die. So Vidur is not asking about some mundane thing. Oh, what happened in this movie? Tell me, tell me. Then what did he do? You know, we asked that, right? Oh, you went to see this movie. Oh, then what did he do? And then, and then what happened? What happened? So how we have the attraction for the material things, Vidur is having the attraction to hear about the transcendental activities of the Lord. And then Maitreya is saying, it's quite befitting because you are a devotee. You are asking me about the incarnation of the Lord. And then that the Lord, he's the source of liberation from the chain of birth and death for all those who are otherwise destined to die. So over here, this, this world is called Mrityulok. You know, they describe this as Mrityulok, a place of, of death. So here each of us is meant to be born and die. Well, what born and die is the body, of course, not the soul. But right now we think we are the body. So how do we get liberation? Only Krishna. Only by uh, taking shelter of Krishna can we get out of this chain of birth and death. No one else can take us out. No one else. Not, not Lord Brahma, not Lord Shiva. No one can take us out of this uh, world of birth and death. Only Krishna can. The great sage Maitri addressed Vidur as a warrior, not only because Vidur belonged to the Kuru family, but because he was anxious to hear about the chivalrous activities of the Lord in his incarnations of Varaha and Nishimha. Because the inquiries concerned the Lord, they were perfectly befitting a devotee. A devotee has no taste for hearing anything mundane. There are many topics of mundane warfare, but a devotee is not inclined to hear of them. So Vidur, he's born in a Kshatriya family. And now he wants to know what happened. How did uh, Lord kill Hiranyaksha, the first demon he called him? How did the Lord kill him? So it's not just because Vidur is a Kshatriya, he wants to hear about these fighting stories. No, he's a devotee. 
And that's why he wants to know the, the pastimes of the Lord. The topics of warfare in which the Lord engages do not concern the war of death, but the war against the chain of Maya, which obliges one to accept repeated birth and death. In other words, one who takes delight in hearing the war topics of the Lord is relieved from the chains of birth and death. So this is a nice benediction. One who takes delight in hearing the war topics of the Lord is relieved from the chains of birth and death. Now, so if we just want to get out of this world of birth and death, what do we have to do? Just happily we have to hear how Krishna is killing the demons. And what is Krishna? Why is he killing the demons? His his war is against the chain of Maya, which forces us. Maya is the one we are forced to take another birth. And then again, we die, birth, and die. Why? Because we think we are the body. We are in that this illusion that we are the body. How do we get out of the illusion? Hear and chant the pastimes of Krishna, the glories of Krishna. Foolish people are suspicious of Krishna's taking part in the battle of Kurukshetra, not knowing. That his, part, that his taking part ensured liberation for all who were present on the battlefield. It is said by Bhishma Dev that all who were present on the battlefield of Kurukshetra attained their original spiritual existences after death. Therefore, hearing the war topics of the Lord is as good as any other devotional service. So people might say, oh, Krishna committed so many people to die, and so he has to take karma and this and that. No, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. All his activities are all auspicious for everyone. Krishna never thinks bad for anyone. So what happened? Uh, what is Bhishma Dev saying? That all who were present on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, because Krishna was there, they were seeing Krishna at the time of their death, they attained their original spiritual existence. They went back to Vaikuntha Lok. They uh, assumed their own uh, original spiritual forms, never to return back to this world of birth and death. So all the topics of the Lord are transcendental. All, all his pastimes of the Lord are transcendental. They're all bhakti. Any comments or anything to add till now? You just mentioned that if we hear about the demons, the war stories of the demons or the war stories, we are liberated. So you gave a reason. The, here, Bhagavatam is saying. There? What was it? Yeah, you just said that it, uh, you were liberated from the death and birth, and that is because these demons are, they represent? Uh, the war against chain of Maya. See, we become demoniac, why? Because we are in ignorance of what? That we start thinking, I'm the body. You know, mm -hmm. we forget, oh, I'm, we forget what? That I'm eternal servant of Krishna. That is Maya. That because of that, we are forced to take birth and death. We are forced to take on repeated bodies. Mm. And so what benediction now we are getting is, which uh, one who takes delight in hearing the war topics of the Lord is relieved from the chains of birth and death. Actually hearing all the pastimes of the Lord, mm. any pastime of the Lord can uh, relieve us from this birth and death. That's the reason Srimad Bhagavatam is given so much importance because it has so many pastimes of the Lord and his pure devotees. But here it's specifically pointed to those people who say that, oh, Krishna commits so many, he kills so many people. What is he doing? You know, I, I don't know if you have heard, oh, how he caused so many people to die on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. But all his activities are all auspicious. It's, it's, um, it, is, um, it is so beneficial that all the people who died, they attain their original forms. They don't need to come back to this material world again. They are liberated. They go back to Vaikuntha.
So you mean that demon Hiranyaksha also went to Vaikuntha planet? Actually, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, they are Jaya Vijaya, no? So, right. so, so they get this liberation. They get this. Um, they, they, then again, they come back. Because they are cursed, right? To come for three lives. Right. So then they come as uh, who? They come as Ravan Kumbhakar. And then they come as Shishupal Dandavakar. So we see, yes. and Shishupal also, he enters into the body of Krishna. Everyone sees, as soon as Krishna beheads Shishupal, mm -hmm. the, 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 the soul of Shishupal, he enters inside the body of Krishna. But again, what happens? Jaya Jaya, again, they tell Krishna, my dear Lord, now we know that you're going to come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Kalyug. And we have come in this demoniac roles for all your, you know, other pastimes. We want to come again in Kalyug. And that same Jai Vijay, the same Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, Ravan, uh, Kumbhakaran, Shishupal, Dandavakar, they come as Jagannadai. Jagannadai, right. Okay. Yeah. And then they get Krishna Prema. Yeah. So this is the, the mystery of the relationship between the Lord and his devotees, you know. So they don't mind being demons. <laughs> so yeah, they as don't long as they get, yeah. So you know, they don't want to fight. You want to fight Krishna? You want to fight? Yes. I, if I can help you in that way, yes, I'm going to come with you. <laughs> but we can't do that. You know? <laughs> we can't do that. We can't say, okay, I'm going yeah, to Really? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> and you're fighting with Krishna and you get liberated. <laughs> you get Yes. So see how, how merciful Krishna is. He's so all auspicious, you know, because, oh, the, you, you are seeing me when you die. Okay, you get liberated. <laughs> you know, oh, Putna, you want to kill me, but you're giving me your milk. So you're me yeah. I'm sorry. Even Putna got liberated, no? Just you know, Putna, she, she yeah. went to Golok, Vrindavan. Golok. See. But just because you gave me a little milk, okay, yeah. you, you did that little service for me, you yes. dressed as a... No. Yeah, she was like uh, Madhi Road, no? to yeah. stay. So, okay, you come. You come to Golok Vrindavan. You can be a nurse over there. So imagine if we really become devotees of Krishna, you know? If we really have that, that, that uh, revive our love for Krishna. You know, what, what a position. What a position to be to be having that relationship with Krishna. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful? Like we want to know so many people. Oh, this person is, uh, we get attracted, right? Oh, this person has these attractive qualities. I wish I would know him. It would be so nice to meet him. And so imagine Krishna has the most attractive qualities. Hey, how would it be to be in a relationship with him? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, text six. Um, Yayotan padaha putro munina gita yarbaka nityokrit tveva murdhani angri. <coughs> Sorry, aru roha hare padam. By hearing these topics from the sage Narad, the son of King Uttanpa Dhruva was enlightened regarding the personality of Godhead. And he, descend, he ascended to the abode of the Lord, placing his feet over the head of death. So here is mentioned about uh, Dhruva Maharaj. While quitting his body, Maharaj Dhruva, the son of King Uttanpad, was attended by personalities like Sunanda and others who received him in the kingdom of God. He left this world at an early age as a young boy, although he had attained the throne of his father and had several children of his own. Because he was due to quit this world, death was waiting for him. He did not care for death, however, and even with his present body, he, aborted, he boarded a spiritual airplane and went directly to the planet of Vishnu because of his association with the great sage Narada who had spoken to him the narration of the pastimes of the Lord. 
So Dhruva Maharaj, we are going to read, uh, it will be more in detail, that death was waiting for him. Death was waiting. He said, wait, let me finish my, my whatever, my chanting, my uh, worshipping. Let me finish. So, and death was waiting for him. And then, but this golden aeroplane came in which Sunanda was there and the other servant the, from Vaikuntha, they came to take him, a separate aeroplane for him. And then, so he was not afraid of death at all. He, in fact, death bowed down to him and he put his foot on the death and he stepped onto the aeroplane. And then he told his, uh, the Vaikuntha, the Vishnu Duktas who had come to take him, he said, um, um, but I want to take my mother also with me because she is my original guru who told me that I should pray, I, mean, I should search for the Supreme Lord. They told him, look, she's there in the other airplane. And he saw her, she was also going to Vekunta. That, that's the Lord. You know, he never forgets anyone. So, Atatra this history of the fight between the Lord as a boar and the demon Hiranyaksha was heard by me in a year long ago as it was described by the foremost of the demigods Brahma when he was questioned by the other demigods. <clears throat> Sorry. So we can see Sorry. So we can see it's Maitriya Muni. He heard the story when Brahmaji spoke to the other demigods. So it's not made up. It's not Maitriya Muni is manufacturing anything. The pastimes of the Lord, of the Lord come in disciplic succession. So that we, they are heard properly and they are received properly. They are spoken properly in, in the correct mood. That's why it's so important to hear from the disciplic succession. Ditir dakshyani shatar maricham kashyapam patim apatya kama chakame santhyayam rik chayar ditam. Diti, the daughter of daksha, being afflicted with sex desire, begged her husband Kashyap, the son of Marichi, to have intercourse with her in the evening in order to beget a child. So Kashyap Muni, he is the son of Marichi, one of the great Prajapatis, one of the sons of Brahmaji. And Daksha, he was another son of Lord Brahma, another of the great Prajapatis. And his daughter is called Diti. So she wanted to have a child and it was not an auspicious moment. It was, so let's see what happens. Ishtvagni jivam payasa purusham jajusham patim nimlochati arka asinam agni agare samahitam. The sun was setting and the sage was sitting in trance after offering oblations to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, whose tongue is the sacrificial fire. So the, the fire, the, when we have the Yajna Kund, there is a sacrificial fire. That fire is Lord Vishnu. So all, that's why he says that he's the beneficiary of all sacrifices. No matter what Yajna people are doing, that fire is the mouth of Lord Vishnu. Fire is considered to be the tongue of the personality of God in Vishnu and oblations of grains and clarified butter offered to the fire are thus accepted by him. That is the principle of all sacrifices of which Lord Vishnu is the master. In other words, the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu includes the satisfaction of all demigods and the other living beings. So when Lord Vishnu receives the offerings uh, which are put inside the sacrificial fire, then Lord Vishnu being satisfied. Then after that, the demigods get their share. 
So when Lord Vishnu is satisfied, then the demigods get their share, then they are satisfied. So in this Kalyug, in the Kalyug, the, the, what is the, the sacrifice that is recommended for this age of Kali is the chanting the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. And when we chant this Hare Krishna Mantra, automatically all the other demigods are also satisfied. We don't have to separately please them. In that place, the beautiful Diti expressed her desire, O learned one. Cupid is taking his arrows and distressing me forcibly as a mad elephant troubles a banana tree. Beautiful Diti, seeing her husband absorbed in trance, began to speak loudly, not attempting to attract him by boldly express, by bodily expressions. She frankly said that her whole body was distressed by sex desire because of her husband's presence, just as a banana tree is troubled by a mad elephant. It was not natural for her to agitate her husband when he was in trance, but she could not control her strong sexual appetite. Her sex desire was like a mad elephant, and therefore it was the prime duty of her husband to give her all protection by fulfilling her desire. So Diti just could not control herself, and she was just too attracted to her husband at that time. And um, so she is appealing to her husband, Tad Bhavan Dayamanayam Sapatinam Samriddhi Bihi Prajavatinam Bhadram Te Mai Ayun Tam Anukraham. Therefore, you should be kind towards me by showing me complete mercy. I desire to have sons, and I am much distressed by seeing the opulence of my co wives. By performing this act, you will become happy. In Bhagavad Gita, sexual intercourse for begetting children is accepted as righteous. A person sexually inclined for simple sense gratification, however, is unrighteous. In Diti's appeal to her husband for sex, it was not exactly that she was afflicted by sex desires, but she desired sons. Since she had no sons, she felt poorer than her co-wives. Therefore, Kashyap was supposed to satisfy his bona fide wife. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that of, uh, he says it's the, in one of the vibhutis that uh, of sex, he's also the desire for sex, for begetting children. Uh, not otherwise, not just to satisfy our, our lusty desires, but the, the, when the desire is there to beget children, that is, that is Krishna. From, uh, from the spouse. So it is not wrong for her, but it's just the time was inappropriate. So we'll stop here for today. Are there any questions or comments? So that's how then she gets two sons, right? Hiranya Kashapu. Yeah, Those are yeah. the sons, right? Yeah, because okay. she's going to go on and on trying to convince Kashyap Muni, but he's going to tell her it's not an auspicious time, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, but she just couldn't control it. And then, then he told her, you know, your, your children are going to be demons. Yeah, that we're going to be reading all of that. Right. Yeah. So, let's we'll stop here for today. Okay. Shriman Bhagavatam ki jai Shla Prabhupad ki jai Gaur Vrindamra Hari Bhagavad Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for joining in today morning. Wishing you all the best for the new year. Yay.